Greetings in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, it's my pleasure to share the Word of God with you. Hope you're all doing good and uh, uh, challenging times. Mm. Uh, God, but we can all be rest assured that we have a good, good Father uh, who loves us, who cares for us. Uh, I want you to be encouraged. So from last week onwards, we are um, looking into the subject of prayer. So uh, Bible for a reason, it is divided into two units, right? Old Testament and New Testament. And uh, as you know, that there is old covenant and new covenant. Uh, so there are different things. There are things that have passed through the covenants. There are things that have been transformed through the covenant. And there are things that are stopped at the covenant exchange. Meaning uh, there are some things in the Old Testament which has passed through the new covenant. Blessing. Good things. Yeah. Such things have passed through the new covenant. There is something that gets transformed. Yeah. Uh, so I will talk about that. There are some things that are stopped. It is, for example, animal sacrifices. Uh, those things are stopped. It's, it's no longer applicable for us. What gets transformed is, there are so many things, but one thing gets transformed is prayer. Prayer under the old covenant is very different and prayer under the new covenant is very different. Because Old Testament predominantly works with the separation paradigm. God is out there. We are here. We have to reach God. Um, so we pray to God. Yeah, we cry out to God. We seek God. Okay. Um, but under the new covenant, we don't do those things. You, you, you will never find apostles where seeking God. You will never find uh, Paul uh, writing to any church saying, seek God. But on the, under the Old Testament, seek God is, is a, a constant, uh, what do you say, exhortation given to people. Seek God while he may be found. But under the new, new covenant, you know, we don't seek him because we are inseparably united with him. Inseparably united with him. Our union is perfect and final. God is not deciding whether he can unite himself with us or not. In the incarnate son, by the word becoming flesh, you know, God has plainly and clearly spoken to the humanity of his intent towards mankind that he is not giving up on mankind. For goodness sake, he is going to be in flesh forever. So we don't need to convince God to be compassionate towards mankind because he has become flesh and he has united himself with us. So... Uh, when we don't understand what has really happened, we just take prayers like how Jeremiah prayed, how Moses prayed, and how these guys prayed, how they would, uh, what do you say, wear sackcloth and put ashes on their head and cry out. You know, it's all in the Bible. So just because it's in the Bible doesn't mean it's applicable for us. Yeah, circumcision is in the Bible. In how many churches do we practice circumcision today? You know, if I'm going to say, okay, all who want to be under the new covenant to be uh, to be the seed of Abraham, uh, all men, please line up. After the service, we are going to do circumcision. 
uh, how many of you will show up for the Sunday next Sunday? So, so cir- circumcision is in the Bible, animal sacrifice is in the Bible. You know, so many things are in the Bible, but we apply covenant and say, oh, yes, it's in the Bible, but we don't do that anymore because we are in the new covenant. So like that, there are so many prayers in the Old Testament, which are there, but we don't need to pray like that because we have better revelation of who God is. You should understand that. Yeah. Uh, We have better revelation of who God is because of the person of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus came, it's, it's, we don't have a better revelation of who God is because we have some secret knowledge or great enlightenment that others didn't have. No, it's not from our end. Nothing has changed from our end. But the self-revelation of who God is has been clearly portrayed in the person of Jesus. Therefore, we have a better revelation of who God is. He has clearly uh, expressly, you know, portrayed himself in the person of Jesus, his character, his nature, his intent, his will towards mankind has been clearly portrayed in the person of Jesus. Therefore, we have a better revelation of who God is. Therefore, our prayers are different. Our prayers are transformed. So that is something that I want you to understand. Prayers are transformed, okay? It is both in the Old Old Testament and in the New Testament. Old Testament saints prayed, New Testament saints also prayed, okay? But how prayer happens under the Old Covenant and how prayer happens under the New Covenant is vastly different because of the self-revelation of who God is in the person of Jesus, okay? So I want you guys to clearly understand this. So uh, if you see apostles praying, they lived in trouble sometimes. If we are talking about we living in trouble times right now, my goodness, when Paul was living and um, Nero was ruling and ravaging the Christians, and the amount of turmoil that the first century Christians were going through is no way in comparison with what's happening right now. But in such scenarios, how did the disciples pray? What was the main content of their prayer? What what is Paul recommending the church to pray for? Did he ask the church to cry out for revival? Did he ask the church to, you know, come out and cry in mass repentance so that God's wrath and anger will be turned away from the city? Yeah. Uh, Do we find any such encouragement uh, to the New Testament churches from Paul uh, asking them to pray like that? He definitely encouraged the church to pray. So we're going to see a few of the verses in which he encourages the churches to pray. Uh, But I want you to see how radically it's different from how uh, prayers are prayed under the Old Covenant. Before we go go into, uh, into the prayers of Paul, I want you to know that Bible New Testament clearly declares Jesus is interceding for us in Hebrews. And in Romans, it says, Holy Spirit is interceding. So, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay? And out of which, the Son and the Spirit, who are within us, right? They are praying for us. They both are 
interceding for us. Today, a lot of intercession happens. A lot of intercession happens today. Uh, with the whole COVID thing happening. Intercessory prayer, intercessory prayer, intercessory prayer. Fantastic. Just imagine, I'm the father, okay? And son, my son, beloved son, is interceding. And my beloved spirit is interceding. And then there is a group also, group of people who are also interceding. Looks like, the father will look at the three intercession like, okay, the son and the spirit, you guys are in agreement with what you're interceding. I didn't know about this group. They are in, they are also interceding, but it is so different, <laughs> right? That's how today's intercession looks. So am I saying don't intercede? No, 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 no. See, you should understand something. Co-labor. That's the one word that you should never forget. Co-labor. See, for goodness sake, God involved Adam and Eve in making the earth look like heaven. Yeah? The garden, the atmosphere of garden had to be, what do you say? expanded throughout the earth and God did not snap his fingers and do all things by himself. He created Adam and Eve, empowered them, blessed them, gave them access. So basically he co-labored with mankind. God always co-labors with mankind. God doesn't want to do things by himself. And he asked Adam to name the animals. God created the animals and God called Adam to name the animals. What do you see? Co-labor. Co-labor. Yeah. Anything and everything you see co-labor. Uh, how much time it would have taken for God to just snap his finger and create an ark for Noah and his family to get in. But why do you think God asked Noah to make the ark? Co-labor, right? He always includes us in the activity that he is doing. Okay, what does co-labor mean? He includes us in the activity that he is doing, okay? So why are we called to intercede? Not because God needs intercession. God needs somebody to convince him to do something. No, 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 no. Our intercession is nothing but an invitation to participate in his intercession. in his intercession. Our intercession is an invitation, is an invitation to participate in his intercession. In the Trinity's intercession, you know, the Trinity's conversation. The Son and the Spirit, they are talking to the Father about what is God's, what is the Godhead's dream for humanity. So for you to first intercede, you need to listen. Intercession is not about crying. Intercession is not about beating your chest. Intercession, intercession is not about shaming yourself or feeling bad. The more you cry, the more you do all those things, oh, that means intercession is powerful. No, 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 no. The greatest secret of intercession is listening. You need to listen. And you need to listen. You need to listen to what the Spirit is saying. You need to listen to what the Son is praying. And you agree with them. 
as his ecclesia as his body you agree with the head you agree with the head office and you say the same thing and you declare the same thing so here you are not praying to god you are not praying to heaven you are praying from god from heaven with god with heaven okay praying to is old testament crying out to god crying out to heaven is old covenant but what is new covenant praying with praying from we are seated together with him in heavenly places so unless we come into the throne mindset unless we come into that space of oh we are far above all these things we are not even qualified to intercede otherwise it's all crying out out of despair see most of as i told you last week just like how the disciples were crying out you know the disciples were crying out were they crying out of faith no you know they were crying out of uh anguish despair fear frustration this is what made them cry out obviously anybody if if they give room for these things they'll cry and that we are calling it as intercession and that we are calling it as prayer of faith uh, that we are calling it as uh, oh let's all come together and cry out to god no god is not looking for people to cry out to him more and more so that he can do something god is looking for ecclesia his governing assembly his sons and daughters who would know him see i was speaking to one person the uh, the other day who was listening to the message and uh, he was saying uh, fantastic you know the last week message was really good uh, you really worked out but the conclusion that you came is you said we should know the father uh, what does it mean to know the father you said uh, the right way to pray is that we should know the father knowing the father it's very abstract see that's what i'm saying we are so used to five step methodology three shortcuts and seven principles of intercession so when we say hey first of all what qualifies us to pray the right prayers is we should know the father like what do you mean by know the father how do we know the father <laughs> otherwise if i give you you know okay 3 days don't eat anything just drink water and uh say these many verses if i give you like that you will all be like hey fantastic great because you've i've given you three steps to pray three steps to inter- intercede you know back in those days we used to receive prayer cards it will have so many points it will in fact some prayer cards will be so detailed that you are supposed to read it so you'll be like oh father dear father i am praying for our nation i am praying for our politician i pray pray that you will give them wisdom so it is you have to read through the whole thing prayers are all written down because we have made it all into techniques and we and how that whole prayer moment would go is everyone keep this in your bible commit 10 minutes every day 20 minutes every day to pray all these points honestly think about it i am giving you a list and i'm asking you to read that list every day for 20 minutes and do you think heaven is sitting up there and like okay yeah 20 minutes 200 people daily so so much hours have been clocked 
in this activity so we better do this thing yeah no that doesn't work like that anything that is not relational any activity your giving your ministry or your prayer whatever you do for god if it doesn't come from that place of relationship if it doesn't come from that place of knowing him then it is just plain religion it is just a religious activity bible calls it as dead works dead works in the book of hebrews when it talks about dead works it's not talking about sinful activities it is talking about religious activities religious activities and <laughs> that book repeatedly says repent from dead works repent from dead works we are supposed to repent from dead works repent from such prayers repent from such religious activities so jesus is praying holy spirit is praying what is the primary content of their prayer yeah if you get to be in the room while jesus and the holy spirit is speaking to the father about you what do you think it would be about i have so, told you so many times john 17 john 17 it is the high priestly prayer of jesus high priestly prayer of jesus romans 8 tells about the high priestly prayer of holy spirit's intercession for us holy spirit's intercession for us you go and read john 17 go and read romans 8 the only content of those two chapter is or that we should know the father in any given situation the prayer of jesus and the spirit who is dwelling within us is that we would know the father because let's take this whole covid situation some you are you are having symptoms you are having fever immediately you feel abandoned immediately you feel you are alone the father has left you that's the fundamental problem we are thinking corona is the problem we are thinking financial situation is the problem we are thinking we don't have a job as a problem oh we don't have a kid we are not married we are thinking these are the problems but fundamentally in all these things devil is using all these things to tell us oh the father has abandoned you you are no good you are not good enough so the primarily what the son and the spirit prays for us in any given situation is that we would know the father and when you know the father and when you hear him speak into your darkness into your god abandoned forsaken feeling and say you are my beloved child then you have this assurance you have this hope arising out of you you have this joy arising out of you you have this faith arising out of you and you are in a place to listen you are in a place to listen and in in that place come with me to first thessalonians chapter 5 16 rejoice always pray without ceasing rejoice always pray without ceasing 
in everything give thanks so anything happens first the immediate response is not prayer the immediate response is joy so if you are not rejoicing you are not in a place to pray that's why prayer is sandwiched between rejoicing and giving thanks giving thanks see you you rejoice until you become joy you give thanks until you become thanks see again i'm not giving you formulas don't don't try to do the oh i i rejoice i rejoice i rejoice i rejoice okay now i can pray no when do you really rejoice have you seen kids rejoice have you seen kids rejoice my goodness when i go for uh, some uh trip outside two three days and then after three days i come home you should see that's called rejoicing that's called rejoicing and something is disturbing you unless you come to that place of knowing him and because you are knowing him you are beginning to rejoice of who he is and how loving he is how faithful he is towards you and in that place in the cocoon of joy and thanksgiving it is sandwiched okay you are giving thanks that's what it says in philippians also right do not be anxious oh, come come with me to philippians chapter 4 rejoice verse 4 rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice let your gentleness be known to all men the lord is at hand be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your prayer request be made known to god look at what step prayer comes always rejoice comes first cry out immediately is not a thing rejoice immediately and rejoice far enough where you are not anxious about it because now you are knowing the father to a level where that issue is losing its awareness in your mind are you getting what i'm saying this takes practice this is the life in the spirit yeah where you rejoice and you rejoice always and then comes prayer and this rejoicing happens when you know him so you the first thing is father how do you want me to know you in this situation father how do you want me to know you in this situation because in every situation there is a new revelation of who he is to you at times he wants to reveal himself as a comforter to you at times he wants to reveal himself as the mighty one to you who fights for you at times uh he wants to reveal himself as provision to you so father how do you want me to know you in this situation that's where the prayer begins and you will get light and as you pray in the spirit you get more light and you get as you get more light you you are rejoicing from that place i thank you for you are my salvation see that that's how david prays because the father has you know unique revelation of who he is to you in every situation so you come to that place you get more light and more revelation and that gives you more joy and you're not anxious about that situation anymore and in that you begin to bring that situation with thanksgiving father this situation you know it's disturbing me i just bring it into your notice i just bring it into your presence i i i i make it known to you yeah and then god doesn't speak paragraphs god doesn't speak 
he does not speak paragraphs he speaks phrases he gives you images at times he just gives you one word then you pray into that word you 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 keep proclaiming those f- little phrases that he gives you over that situation over the person over whatever he is asking you to pray over so this is praying with god so now you are not having an agenda of what god should be doing you are just knowing him and in the process of knowing him you align yourself with him of what he wants to do on earth in that time in that situation and he gives you words and you are speaking those words so prayer is not you crying out <laughs> whatever you want to cry out to god prayer is you coming to that place of knowing him where you know him and you hear him and out of that knowing and hearing you proclaim you agree with him you speak the same thing that is called confession confession meaning speaking the same thing as the other right in 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 the court setting we say oh they have called him for confession so meaning speaking the same thing so ah uh, that's what prayer is that's what we are supposed to be doing in this situation and so when i was praying about this whole covid thing what i saw was this image of aaron's rod aaron's rod becoming a serpent yeah i want you to uh come with me to exodus exodus chapter 7 um verse 10 onwards so moses and aaron went in to pharaoh and they did so just as the lord commanded and aaron cast down his rod before pharaoh and before his servants and it became a serpent but pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers so the magicians of egypt they also did in like manner with their enchantments for every man threw down his rod and they became serpents but aaron's rod swallowed up their rods so this image is what i got when i was praying aaron's rod swallowed up their rods yeah so as i was praying into that image i was getting more light i was seeing my goodness jesus became you know serpent right on the cross john 3 just as the serpent is lifted up in the wilderness and uh the son of man shall be lifted up and what happens when did uh at what scenario people were dying of poison these fiery serpents these fiery serpents were biting people and moses was supposed to make a serpent out of bronze and show it up on the rod and who ever looks upon who ever looks upon that serpent shall live so him becoming the serpent him becoming sin for us him tasting death for us through his death he destroyed death yeah so i i was sharing about these things you know in in, in the daily uh, prayer that's happening in zoom uh so if you haven't joined us we'll be having it for a few more days so please join us indian time um 7 to 8 every evening yeah so um you can contact the number for the zoom details so 
I was sharing the same there. Serpent is death, destroyed death. He, the serpent swallowed up the other serpent. My goodness. Mm. Yes. In as much as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he likewise have partaken of flesh and blood. That through his death, he might destroy him who had the power of death. So the reason he became flesh and blood is one of the primary reasons is to destroy death through his death. And while we take part in this, right? While we take part in, in the flesh and blood, what we are proclaiming is that he has destroyed death on our behalf. And in, in Corinthians also we find Jesus saying this, um, take, do this in remembrance of me. Take, eat this, do this in remembrance of me. Take, drink this blood, do this in remembrance of me. And finally he says, you are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. You're proclaiming the Lord's death so while, whenever we are taking part in this, we are proclaiming the Lord's death. And what is his death all about? His death. That, that through his death, he might destroy him who had the power of death. Yes. So whenever we are taking part, we are proclaiming that Jesus died our death. And Jesus defeated death. That's what we are proclaiming. Yes. Marco Labradele Mendula Brochele Brahadana Mini and Trocoto. So we were praying one hour into all these things, but it all started with an image of me seeing Aaron's rod swallowing up the other rods. Yeah. That's the only image. So as I pray more into these things, I'm getting more revelation. Then finally, I'm thinking, oh, Aaron's rod is doing so many things. Finally, what happens to Aaron's rod is in a, again, a dispute. Uh, God is saying, come on, everybody keep your rods. I'll show you the difference. And Aaron's rod is swallowed up by life. Initially, Aaron's rod became a serpent and swallowed up other serpents. That is Jesus swallowing up death for our, on our behalf. Then, see, Jesus' resurrection did not destroy death. Jesus' death itself destroyed death. Through his death, he destroyed death. So resurrection is him being swallowed up by life. Glorified body, new creation. New creation. So the Aaron's rod was swallowed up by life. So, death being swallowed up by life. That is what we are supposed to be praying into. Is what God gave me to pray about this whole situation. And that comes from a place of me knowing him. Yes, so many things, so many friends, everyone. But I have to tune out of all those things. And bring my affection towards him. And listen to him. So that I can pray with him. Are you getting what I'm saying? So as we take part, I want you to know. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Father, for your goodness and your faithfulness in our lives. Let life swallow up death in the life of everyone who is watching me right now. I thank you for the spirit, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells within us, quickening our mortal bodies. We thank you for doing it. I speak complete restoration. 
complete swallowing up experience complete swallowing up experience in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus yes in jesus name amen 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 god bless you um we are doing we are beginning to you know do new projects through you are loved uh for covid care uh helping kids giving them nutrition helping people who are suffering thank you for generously supporting us during such challenging times god has enabled us to become a channel of blessing and thank you for you our co-laboring with god and with us in this time thank you for your generosity god bless you see you all soon